Hello and welcome to another Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.B. Steele and I will be your nerd today and every other day that you watch one of my silly little shows. So hi, how are you? Oh wait, actually just go ahead and put it in the comments because not only will that let me know how you are doing, it will also um, put you in for the uh, February comment raffle which anybody, if anybody uh, lets you know what they got in their comment raffle boxes when they won, you want to be part of this. You want your friends to be part of this. I want your friends to be part of this. Give me subscribers. Okay, now that that's all said, let's talk about the week in Brian. Um, professionally, it has been a great week. Uh, finished up a couple of things uh, for a license that I have not openly worked for before. Um, and uh, currently have a pitch sent in to uh, the people in charge with that license to see if I can make something very cool for them. Um, I just started on an awesome adventure for uh, Power Rangers. Um... I assume it'll end up probably being part of the Play Renegade program, uh, which is like the organized play. You get adventures and, and characters and stuff to play in your stores and things. Um, but I do know that uh, it is likely going to debut at uh, uh, at Gen Con. So either way, super cool. Always love getting Power Ranger stuff down on the table. Um, but uh, let's see, what else, what else? Um... I started putting some words down on the new novel, on the new Shadowrun novel. Uh, not as many as I would have liked, but that is because uh, I have been spending a little more time over in the hobby section of my studio getting some models painted. More on that later. Um, but yeah, so, so I think professionally... Uh, oh, and I signed... Uh, well, in theory, the contract's not actually here yet, but the company has said that they want me to. Um... So, uh, I used to do a lot of work, a lot of writing and design work for the Dungeon in a Box company, um, who I love those guys to death, uh, and, uh, they also are the same company that make the skinny minis, um, basically the, the hard acrylic, uh, standy miniatures for their various adventures and, and models and a lot of generic fantasy stuff. I think they might actually do some sci-fi stuff too, but I, 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 don't, I, I, I digress. Um, they reached out to me and wanted me to do a little bit of design work as part of their Skinny Mini program. Uh, and uh, so it sounds like uh, every few weeks or so I'm going to be doing uh, dropping a few, uh, a few thousand words for them. Uh, that'll be fun. Um... Yeah, so busy, 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 as always, uh, but uh, probably the one thing, I mean, obviously, you know, my Renegade stuff, my Essence 20 stuff, uh, my, my, you know, role-playing game stuff, you know, that takes a lot of my time, uh, but also uh, on top of that, um, it, as of late, we really have been focusing uh, on my work with Resnova with Warzone Eternal. Um mostly because we are starting to get closer and closer and closer to uh, the launch of the new Kickstarter to do the Faction Starter Boxes. Um, we, we will have more information about that. I'm actually going to talk more about that this, in this episode. That's probably why a lot of you are already here. Um, but uh, as we get closer to that date um, and closer to events and things that we are going to be showing people uh, the stuff, the Warzone stuff, um, you'll get more and more information through me here. Um, but uh, because uh, we hit a couple of very particular, very, very particular uh, important milestones in kind of the pre-system check, so to speak, um, I've been spending a lot of time focusing on that, uh, which actually bleeds into my games that were played. Um, so last week I did play in the uh, Waking Realms D&D, where I'm the, cap the Capoeira Cat Monk. Um, we are uh, in a desert 
that's riddled with weird magical prismatic swarms, um, or not swarms, storms, uh, and I think we are in maybe like a crashed spelljammer ship or something. I'm not sure exactly how the structure exists, but it's definitely like kind of a half buried, almost like flying saucer style thing, um, that is supposed to take us to a flying city, um, but uh, I the, the the desert is filled with horrible sandworms, very a la Dune. Um, praise the Great Maker. Uh, the uh, but there's a lot of magic going on, and where we ended the last session, we were getting ready to maybe like hit the button on take us to the flying city, please. So we'll see. Uh, that that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um. I made a mystery character for someone's online stream. Uh, I cannot say any more in case someone's watching, uh, but I basically I was asked to be a guest star in someone's online game, and uh, because of the nature of my schedule and not being able to show up all the time every time. Uh, we made a very particular NPC uh, that hopefully will um, knock some socks off of some feet. That's that's my goal. So that that should be a lot of fun. Um, I've got some I've got some games getting ready. To, I've got three days straight of D and D this upcoming weekend. Um, basically Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday, um, and potentially maybe even a little bit of Sunday. I might get some Transformers role playing in, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna be a crazy weekend. I got a lot of paintings to do too, um, but that's that's more or less everything. Uh, I there is a, a new Xbox game that my um, that my son got me involved in called Streets of Rogue, uh, as a play on the Streets of Rage. I think uh, it's a top down, very pixelated uh, open world concept that is uh, goofy amounts of fun. It's silly goofy amounts of fun. Um, but and it, but it's another thing that I can play with my kid, so uh, I am practicing to be more useful when we play together. Because right now, uh, I am far more of an albatross around that boy's neck than a helper, <laughs> than any kind of helper in that game. Um, let's see what else. What else? Uh, I think that's really it, we can, Brian. Um, so, uh, I'm still stalled out on the diet right now, uh, but honestly, that comes from... So, let's lean into my professional, or my personal life right now, since so we're talking about the weight loss and everything. Um, so dieting's expensive, uh, especially depending on, um, the kind of food intake. There's a reason why America has an obesity, obesity problem, is because foods that are cheap tend to not be great for you um and we are my, my wife and i are really feeling that right now um because uh middle of last week my refrigerator died uh it killed a pile of our food uh you know basically all of the meat that we had saved up because we're trying to do this low carb thing most of that went bad um, or at least went questionable enough that, like, I don't want to risk getting my family sick. Um, so we're talking, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of groceries just gone. Uh, plus having to fix the, the refrigerator itself. For someone on a one-income household, uh, it, it's been it's been rough. It's been very rough. Um, uh, I did get a little cash app, bump, uh, cash app bump from one of you viewers. Thank you very much. Uh, you know who you are. I'm not going to, you know, uh, call you out in front of your friends and be like, nee, 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 nee. Uh, but you know who you are. Thank you very much. Uh, you bought dinner for my family for one night. Um, so, uh, as always, you know, the Amazon wish list, my Cash App address, all that stuff's in the description of the video. Uh, I'm not asking, but I would never say no. Um, yeah, but that's, that's pretty much it personally. The, uh, you know, I am going to go on a little bit of a, little bit of rant about the fridge. So I pay for a home warranty in my house. We have enough stuff and the house is old enough that sometimes things go wonky. And so I pay a flat fee every month to a company 
Um, and if something goes wrong that is covered under that warranty, which is most things, um, I can call them up and say, hey, I need to file a claim and I pay them you know, X amount of money and they send somebody out and it's covered up to a certain degree. Always, you know, it's, you know, I pay X and it's covered like 10 times X. I mean, like, so it's like, it's, it's definitely still well worth the, even if I only ever get like two or three claims a year, it always pays for itself. It's, it's, it's super fantastic. It's really worth it. Um, so this time they send this guy out, uh, go, he goes to repair the fridge he gets everything taken care of, compressor problem, all, all the all the rigmarole that we that we know happens when repair stuff happens. Um, and then at the end, when I'm signing paperwork and all that stuff, he points out that he's like, oh yeah, and your water line is leaking. Like the line that comes from the basement to the fridge that goes to the ice maker and the, the water spigot. And I'm like, okay, so how much did that, you know, how much was that to fix? And he goes, oh, well, I'm not, I'm, you know, that's not part of this job. I'm just informing you that that needs fixed. And it's really, and then he follows it up with, and it's really easy. You just switch out that valve. And I'm like, okay, but that's, that's your job. Like, that, that's you. You're here to fix my fridge and my fridge is leaking. And it wasn't, and, you know, my, my wife and I swear it was not leaking before he pulled it out of the wall and was taking a look at it. So something something happened and he's like ah, I'll give you the valve you can take care of it weird alright not a plumber not a repair specialist barely handy and so I get this valve I go downstairs I turn the water off down in the basement and I uh, I do all the things you're supposed to do get out get it all squared away attach it as, as absolutely you know the the it, it's it's on the same if not better than the piece was before I go back downstairs I turn on the water Natalie starts yelling hey turn it off turn it off turn it off because it's spraying everywhere so where we had an almost imperceivable leak that came about because this guy found it now we have literally spraying water coming out of the back of this hose because he refused to do it so, or rather, he didn't even refuse. He just, just didn't. He just told us that needs to get done and then left. So I called the company and was like, listen, your repair guy just had us do a thing ourselves that he didn't do. And now things are worse. Please help me. And the, their customer service people, they were, oh, that he shouldn't have done that. And we'll send him right back out. He'll turn right around and come back out. Well, obviously he didn't show up. So right now my fridge, while working, no longer makes ice or has water uh, water coming into it um, because I have to keep the water turned off to it or it sprays everywhere. Uh, which sucks because I don't, I really don't want to pay another hundred bucks to have somebody come out and flip out a valve that I just flipped out that should have been flipped out by the, the professional the first time. Um, not to mention, you know, that's just not money that I, I have lying around that I want to that I want to spend. So I'm not gonna. My, one of my friends is actually really really handy. He's probably gonna come by this weekend uh, to have a scotch or two with me, watch a bad movie, and take a look at the fridge. So we'll see more news on that next week. But let's. Let's talk about something. I don't know the real reason you guys are here. You guys don't want to hear about my trials and tribulations, my money problems, and you guys don't you, you don't you don't care about none of that. You're here because you want to talk about games. Specifically this week, you want to talk about Warzone Eternal. So, for the people who are new to the channel that weren't around last year when we when when Resnova and I uh, undertook the first Kickstarter. Warzone Eternal is a skirmish miniatures game designed in the Mutant Chronicles universe. Uh, and it is a... War, Warzone has been a miniatures game for... I have to look up the actual date, but it's like 20 years. Maybe. It's been around a while. Um, maybe a little longer, like 22, 23 years. And uh, it has changed hands. It has changed styles. It has changed companies multiple times as it's that there's been multiple versions of the game before and 
sometime a little over a year, a little over a year ago, um, we, uh, uh, the the gentleman over at Resnova got in touch with me and asked me to redesign and re revive Warzone, create a new game. We we called it Warzone Eternal, uh, in the hopes that this will be the last and forever version of the game. Um, but it is, uh, it really is a, a great rule system that we came up with, uh, and we launched our first Kickstarter almost, almost exactly a year ago, um, and it was successful, but both Resnova and the licensing company, uh, really kind of looked at it and was like, it could be more successful. And so rather than letting it achieve its success and finish through the run, but then basically be dead after the first round of models. It They, they went ahead and canceled it um, and uh, gave us an extension to kind of take a new take it take a new swing at it look at it from a different direction come up with some uh, you know better price points better better models themselves listen to the fans in a different way and so Alex uh, the, the 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 chief big wig over at Resnova sent out a questionnaire to everybody involved with the the uh, the Kickstarter and the questionnaire basically said you know what did we do right what did we do wrong uh, you know what what factions you were interested in where do you live you know trying to get a trying to get a, a map of what of what happened and almost universally uh the people were like the rules look great the game looks great we think that it's going to play fantastic but there's problems with the models there's problems with the point of sale like the level of models you get for your money there's problems with you know paying paying more from a modular system a modular miniature system that you know maybe isn't necessary and so alex went back to the drawing board and uh we 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 looked at it we figured it out and we re we found ways to save some money some ways to make more dynamic models that you, we think that you guys the fans will love um and come at it in a slightly different way with some different styles of faction boxes faction starter boxes um that will be a little more press and play uh than the first that our first uh, our, our first attempt um a little bit more of this box can play the game just fine you don't need to make any weird choices you don't have to you, here's this box play the game and expand as you as you see fit and I think that's going to be a really good approach um knowing what we are doing going to be doing with the factions um with the uh, and with the the models that are involved i think that um i think the people are going to be really happy i think the the old school fans are going to see the the uptick in in quality and posing and dyna dyna dynamism that we put together for these um the new fans are going to get uh, a third unit in every faction that you know was not available in the first faction starters um yeah i'm i'm really psyched there are uh, as as announced i'm not actually this is not a spoiler alex actually already said so in his uh um state of the union address uh that one of the things that we said in the first kickstarter is we our first big add to this game was going to be a brotherhood faction starter and we given the given the extra time to do the testing to do the sculpting to do the planning brotherhood will be part of the initial kickstarter they will be one of the factions available right out of the gate um for this for this new kickstarter and i can say this they are sweet looking um, as a, as the, I know I'm biased because I helped with some of the art direction on it. Um, and I know that I am, uh, I'm definitely biased when it comes to the rules. I made them. Um, I think that Brotherhood players are going to find that their forces, especially once they grow a little bit and get a couple more, uh, a couple more of the, the units that we have planned down the road. Um, I, I think that people are going to 
the, the Brotherhood is going to be happily feared the right way again. But I digress. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically the, the Kickstarter, um, which I do not believe we are ready to announce the actual date for that yet, um, as that there's still some wiggle room, um, you'll probably know some more information a little closer to our first public appearance. Uh, and our, so our first public appearance of uh, Warzone Eternal, where you will be able to actually see some of the, the pre, pre-production masters. Um, you'll get to see some painted demo figs. I'm actually going to show you a couple of them today. Uh, you're going to get to play the game on a sweet professionally made thematic demo table um and uh maybe some more surprises there may be some more surprises there uh at the adepticon show at the end of march in chicago illinois um now i do know a lot of people are going to go wait a minute but i'm not in chicago i'm not in the u.s i can't I, I, I can't get there to see this cool stuff. I am going to try my damnedest to take a bunch of pictures, try and take some photos. One of the people that we brought on, um, one of the people we brought on for the Warzone Eternal program through Resnova is uh, uh, Richard Agney, um, who has been a voice of game media, uh, game industry media for... 20 years you know he's, he's been around a long time he used to work for diamond comics for alliance for game trade magazine i mean he's been he's involved i think he runs something like his his company uh his media company i think runs something like a hundred different game industry tiktoks um there will be after adepticon there will be a lot of pictures there will be a lot of little videos i'm gonna probably do a bunch of tiktoks from the floor because it's easy to it's very easy to just quickly do you know do those maybe maybe i'll get somebody while they're playing um so if you don't have a tiktok uh i'm not saying i'm not saying that you won't be able to find this information anywhere else like we're doing it weird and exclusive that's not true um and then obviously once adepticon is done i'm gonna come back and do a you know, a review of how things went. Um, I might try and get some uh, some player review interviews, uh, some small like, you know, video, some video footage to come show you guys. Um, but I'm really excited. Um, not just because, yes, the playtesters have been very happy. We brought in a bunch of new playtesting groups to kind of finish the icing on the cake. Um, but, uh, you know, it's... It's one thing to hear back from the same people, the playtesters, uh, about how great something is. You know, oh, this unit is super cool. Oh, I can't wait to see how this goes. You know, oh, the you know this this rule is fantastic, or, or you know it feels so it fe- it feels you know the, you know the, we've you know, the, this this tweak in the rules feels so much better than the old way or, or whatever. Um, not that any of that stuff isn't you know doesn't hit home. It it absolutely does. It's just that this will be the first time that we are going to straight up just let people walk up to the booth and play the game. No, uh, no, no filters. No, oh hey, you know, yeah. There's always the caveat that until the actual rule book comes out, there's always tweaks that could happen. But we're at a really good place with the rules. We are very happy. Um, there are a couple, there's been a few minor changes from last year's version. Uh, so if you actually watch one of the older, uh, one of the older videos, uh, here on my channel, I actually did a battle report video. Um, there are a few things that have changed from then to now. Um, there's a, been a few, a few differences on how to build an army, uh, some point costs. We've added some, uh, some di- some added, uh, flexibility in some of the points, um, but for the most part, it's still the same game. Like, almost everything that we said before, actions, reactions, you know, how the different reactions function, uh, you know, the the fact that it's still a, a, still a skirmish-based game, you know, on average. I think the, the games that we played, we played full, full-size, like, normal full-sized games this weekend with my playtesters, and I think we had 
my army that I tried to I tried to do an imperial swarm army. So I did a bunch of golden lions, uh, a handful of blood berets, and a few trenchers. Uh, I think I think it was eleven models. I think I, I think I had eleven guys on the table to to start, and that was like, and that's roughly like the the, the size of uh, the game that I would that I would expect to be a, a, a normal size game. Uh, and I think the other the other armies that we that we went against had about seven or eight. Um, you know, so that so give, that gives you an idea of roughly the scale that we're looking at when it comes to like what I would consider a normal tournament force is probably going to be anywhere between like. Seven and twelve models. If you're really, really focused on uh, on on schleps, and by schleps I mean you know uh, lower lo lower recruits that you get cheaper. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, there's always the outliers. Somebody who's playing Algaroth uh, could just take a couple of Centurions and then just fill the board with uh, with undead legionnaires and do the the, the Walking Dead mass horde. Um, I just think that they're probably gonna have a hard time with some of the objectives, <laughs> uh, but it could be a lot of fun. It, you know, but that's also an outlier. That's a corner case that most people are probably not gonna do. I think on average, you're gonna probably see between seven and seven and eight, seven nine models, uh, especially once the uh, you know future waves start to hit and you get some of the other you know, slightly more expensive, even more specialized or possibly like character level type models, bigger models that, ha you know, have more wounds and are tougher that do more, do, do more on the battlefield, more specialized forces. Um, obviously those are going to be more expensive. Yeah. Like that's the, we, we can't have everything be the same cost because then everything would be generic and weird. So there's, a, there's cost variations that will let you build different types of armies that we know that are coming down the road. Um, but let's let's talk. Let's actually talk about those faction starters. So, um, we, Alex and I, have not a hundred percent determined what's all going to be in each one. Like literally down to the individual models, we are working on those, trying to figure out, get the point costs right, get everything you know on equal footing. So that way, if if you buy. Uh, you know, if you buy a Bauhaus faction starter and your buddy buys a capital one, you guys can just take your take your models, put them together, and play, um, and know that those two boxes are considered to be on equal footing. Um, so that's we're tweaking that right now. We're figuring, you know, where you know, do we put a rocket launcher in the in the thing, or do we only give them a light machine gun? You know, do we put, uh, you know all regular grunts of this kind or we go ahead and throw in a medic you know like that's so we're we're, we're working on uh, we're working on how that's going to go uh but uh, i can give you a quick rundown uh where the, the you heard it here first um on the kind of general concepts of what's going to be in those faction starters obviously i can't show you all of the stuff um, I've got a handful of painted demo models. Uh, I've got one that's only half painted, and I, wa I really tried to get them finished. I, I wanted to get them finished last night, but sleep happened. Um, so he's just basically dry brushed to show you a little bit of contrast, and I will show him to you in a moment. Um, and the only reason that I'm doing that is because uh, when I was playtesting this weekend, I went ahead and posted a black and white picture on my Instagram uh of the uh of, of of a scene that was taking place and uh some very clever clever gamer uh figured out what one of the models in the picture was despite being so far back and texted me and basically and basically was like i see what you got there so today we will uh we'll talk about that um yeah, so the factions that we're going to be uh, looking at in the in the opening the opening Kickstarter, uh, very similar to the last Kickstarter we do, we, we really wanted to start with the basis of the corporations. That is the heart of the 
of of the mutant chronicles is is these these mega corp these mega corporations that you know span the galaxy or rather the solar system uh and each have their own feel and their own their own you know push and pull and also their own gaming style and how the, the how their their faction kind of generally comes to war uh so you will have bauhaus you will have capital you will have imperial now imperial definitely leans toward the special forces side of the imperial um as of now the faction starter does not have any wolfbanes in it um wolfbanes are something that we feel it i almost i almost wanted to push uh, uh push us toward it toward literally having a second faction where there was the imperial army and then there were the wolfbane clans um but it kind of goes against the uh the concept that we are trying to sort of have that feel of the old game and the old game imperials had both they had both and they could use both um so wolfbanes are are planned they're you know they're being play tested down the road um but in that original faction starter it's just the just the the actual the the actual imperial army itself um the uh let's see yeah so Bauhaus capital imperial um mishima uh and who am i freaking oh cybertronic uh and cybertronic as well those are the main corporations are covered uh, like I mentioned, we are making sure that the Brotherhood is going to be involved. So you will have a Brotherhood faction starter if you want to play the forces of the Cardinal, the forces of Light. Um, and then on the dar the the darkness side of things, we have a faction starter that is ba that is rooted in Algaroth, um, which uh, will have your you know your Centurion, your Necromutants, your Undead Legionnaires. Uh, we do know that there will be some more options available, uh, kind of, hopefully as the Kickstarter just, you know, blows up and does really well, we'll be able to add even more stuff. But at this time, um, the, uh, the, the, those factions are those factions. That's, that's what we've got. Um, the concept for all of our... Uh, all of our faction starters is that we will have, I, like I said, this will be the same number of points or uh, the, the the same the same deployment points for all of the different uh, all the different factions, and each box, each faction box, will give you uh, models from three different unit types. Um, so, uh, for example. Um, I, oh, I mentioned them earlier. Uh, so, example, our Imperial box will have some Blood Braves, will have some Golden Lions, and will have some Trenchers in it. Um, but it'll be basically playable right out of the box. Straight straight ready to go. Um, every, every box will have, like I said, uh, will have three different types of units in it. Um, and then you will have that ability... Uh, to grow your force, like let's say that you you know you buy that faction starter and you love the the concept of you know the the imperial gun line, but you want more of this. Obviously, we're going to have other options for you to be able to purchase more and different models from those units. But that starter box is going to be basically a way for you to get a nice taste of how the faction plays, and again, more importantly, playable out of the box. You know, glue them together learn the rules, start doing missions. That's, that is, that is our goal this time. Uh, and then our, because our, we, we learned from our last Kickstarter is there was a, just a few too many movement parts to make those opening forces, a few too many options, uh, for people to go, well, wait a minute, how does this work? What if I want to buy this? How many of these do I get? We've made that, we've made it a lot simpler. Um, we think that it's going to help a lot of players to basically go, this is in fact a starter box. It is a box that starts my faction that lets me learn how to play with these guys. Instead of a kind of force building foundation, it serves that point, but 
in and of itself, it is just a playable force and competitive with the other playable force faction boxes. Now, here is where um, I digress a little bit away from the, the Kickstarter and talk about the future. So, if there's no question, especially if you, if you listen to Alex and I banter uh, in any of our interviews or anything like that, um, I have plans within plans. I have already designed like six waves worth of models, new, the, you know, expanding into other factions and sub factions. You know, I, 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 I do not rest well in, uh, when it comes to the design element. I want these things tested. I want these things available. So when as a company, Resnova is ready to launch another, you know, here's another unit, here's two more units. I want, the stats to be ready to be done and to be just you know press button add stuff uh, and it also gives me an opportunity to make sure uh all of the factions are getting you know equal attention you know you don't want 15 releases for Bauhaus and then you, you know that Mishima player goes I still only have the original three you know that's not fair to anybody involved and as a company it's it's a bad move because you want to be able to keep those other factions happy you want to be able to spread the love um, and as we all know, sometimes when a brand new fancy model pops out for a different faction and, you know, you go, oh my God, I love that model. I want that model. Sometimes you end up buying a second faction. So it, it's, it's obvious, it's obvious what we're trying to do, but from a designing standpoint, I am ready. And I have sent, you know, we, there are, there are things in the queue that, uh, Alex laughed at me because he's like, we're not ready for that yet, but I am. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, you know, again, there's the, I have a lot of people involved with this, uh, whole rigmarole. Um, but I, I do, I do think that, um, I do think that this, upcoming Kickstarter, and I, I, mean, I know everyone's going to be like, oh, of course you do, you're part of it. I do think that the upcoming Kickstarter is going to be successful again, and I, th I I do hope that it'll be dramatically more successful. I hope that it blasts the old, other one out of the water so we can start moving into those second and the third waves worth of minis like, bam, 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 just start just smashing that stuff out, and then start being able to keep ahead of the ball. Um, I know Alex has talked about new opportunities in this Kickstarter. Um, things that we didn't realize that you guys as a fan base really, really wanted. Um, and uh, we talked to, to some, some marketing people. We talked to uh, uh, some some people who have had uber successful Kickstarters in the, in the past, and we've taken some notes. And we learned. You know, We learned from our last one. We learned a lot. And I think I think this, I think this is going to be really good on lots of different levels. Um, most importantly, I think that a lot of the players that were skeptical about having to buy, you know, two of the same unit box to try and fix things and come up with a, a playable Blood Beret squadron or whatever, um, I think we've we've solved that. Uh, and then rules wise, I. I I'm super proud of these rules. Uh, if you've played, if you played the old War Zones, uh, minus Resurrection, uh, only because Resurrection did a lot of things that were kind of completely different than the the rest of the War Zone family. Um, but the uh, uh, if you played Dark Age, uh, specifically post 2017, where I was in charge, um, you're you're gonna see a lot of things and go oh. I see. It's a very spiritual successor kind of thing. Um, and uh, I, I do hope that Adepticon, that there will be a lot of people that want to try this new game. Um, because more than anything, word of mouth is the power that makes so many gamers... Check, check it, you know. Oh, hey, someone shared this Kickstarter link to my group. I can't wait to take a look at it. You know. Oh, hey, I was ta talking to the store the other day, and somebody was mentioning you know this new model, and man, it's super cool looking. 
So I think I think that the, it's it we are we are going to need to be a little more vigorous in how we market this and how we get people you know looking and playing. So shows like Adepticon. Um, those those are going to be things that Resnova is going to need to start paying attention to. And I love doing conventions, and I love talking shop, and I love pushing minis around with people. So uh, if you're going to be at Adepticon, please, please, please come to our booth, um, get a game in, and take a look at the. We're going to have a bunch of cool models on display, uh, including a an unexpected uh, um, art piece. We'll call it that. Basically, when I was making one of the models, I screwed up, and uh, it's it is not for play; it's just for show. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think that uh, I think that Adepticon is going to be a big a big push. You're going to see a lot of pictures. Um, I know that there is a Warzone Eternal fan based Discord channel. Expect to see a lot of stuff there. Um, and uh, watch my watch my my different social media platforms. I'm gonna be posting a lot of stuff, and uh, you know, subscribe to all the Resnova stuff, and pay attention to anything that Rick Agney is posting about it because he is officially part of the team. So uh, if he starts posting about Warzone Eternal, it is not rumor. He's he's at Ground Zero like I am. So yeah. So before I let you guys go, because uh, I don't, I, I, I don't want to risk the wrath of Alex by saying too much uh, about what's going to be in the starter boxes or anything like that, and I definitely don't want to accidentally say something that might change before the Kickstarter actually launches or something along those lines, because then it turns out to be, you know, a problem when someone goes, "Hey, you said," and it ends up being wrong. So I don't want to run down that, uh, you know, those risks, but I do want to show you just a handful of minis that some of them you might recognize. Uh, one of them, if you were part of the original Kickstarter, you will recognize when I finally got it painted. Uh, so with Brotherhood becoming a, a full faction, it's, this is less of an important, like, ooh, spooky fig, as it is just a model that they that they have. We have, let's see if I can do this back a hand thing. I've done that before, just so you guys will focus on it. We have the limited edition posing of the... Oh, come on, friend. And we have the uh, is a Brotherhood Mortificator. Very specifically, it is he is the Mortificator that is in the pose of uh, Sebastian Crenshaw when he was over the like standing on top of a car, shooting down at uh, I think Metropolitan Prophet or Necromutant. Um, but uh, it's a great pose. And that model uh, in the first Kickstarter was like a super exclusive, fancy add-on. Um, I do not know what our plans are for him this time around, but I do know that he is awesome and is going to be part of the Kickstarter in some fashion. Um, next up, to just show you some stuff I've been painting lately, uh, we have... A couple of I've done more of these, but these are the ones that I I wanted to show you guys specifically. Uh, we got Mister Mister Undead Legionnaire. Hey there, friend. I'm an Undead Legionnaire. Mer, mer. I uh, I love these guys. They're so adorable. Uh, uh, so we've got that one. And I wanted to show you another one because this is an iconic piece. There are pictures of this Undead Legionnaire on Dune Trooper cards in the rule books of old games. This piece of Paul Bonner art, I think, translated so perfectly. I cannot... There we go. I mean, he, he's got that lit, ra raised leg. He looks like he's almost like... Uh, like... 
sneak in with his Kratak assault rifle. I love this guy. I love this little guy. He's adorable. Do, 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 do. So that's that's my probably my favorite on Dead Legionnaire. Uh, and the last model, the last fully painted model I want to show you before moving on um, is actually there was there was a lot of uh, unexpected contention about the Algaroth Centurion, uh, who was uh, effectively a Necromutant slash Undead Legionnaire like sergeant. Um, when we made the modular minis to begin with, those modular minis, we were like, oh, you can just build one of these guys to be your Centurion. And it always you know, seemed right. The playtesters didn't seem to care. Everything, everything worked out. But then when we actually produced the models and showed people, um, there was a surprising amount of, uh, like, pushback that, you know, it, it just looked like another Necromutant with different weapons. You know, he didn't, he didn't stand out. He doesn't have the right, you know, there was one instance where someone, he didn't have the right tubes. I, I don't know. But it, we listened. And I also looked at it as the Centurion is supposed to be bigger and tougher than a regular uh, Necromutant. So we we went back to the drawing board. We have some. We had somebody put one together for us, uh, and the the master is a little bit bigger than a regular knock mutant. So they actually like you can you can see them kind of towering amongst the rest of their uh, their forces. And here he is. La -da 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 -da. Trying to see if I can get him to focus. Focus. So he's got that Skalak sword, the 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 Vorish handgun, the Algaroth symbol on his uh, uh on his thigh to show that he he in, is in fact uh an Algaroth centurion, not just some necromutant punk. And a couple of grenades on his belt to show that he's got him. It's a very... I, I, I had a lot of fun painting this guy. And putting him on the table next to the Necromutants. He stands just a little bit taller than them. So, like, he does, in fact, look more imposing and, more, and bigger and larger. He looks like he is a slightly larger monster leading them to battle. It's, it's very cool. I think, I think that... Fans of the the Algaroth faction are gonna love it. Um, I wanted to have some more stuff to show you fully painted, uh, but combination of Adepticon being right around the corner and wanting to have a lot of stuff to show you there, um, and kind of focusing on waves of stuff to get painted and done here, um, I didn't have any. But I do have. Uh, I mentioned that during the playtest game, there was uh, the, there there was a a an accidental accidental leak of a new model that no one had seen yet, uh, and that it is on my Instagram far out and zoomed out. So I figured I would go ahead and now this is not painted yet. It is primed and it is dry brushed. I I just started. Do not judge me on the paint job of the Attila 3 Carassier combat droid. So, here we go. This is the one that the heavy machine gun, obviously in the game they've got other options for weaponry, but he is a big monster. He's on a big 40 mil base. Uh, yeah. Uh, I love him. Just give me a, an idea. Let me put let me put that mortificator next to him so you can see just how. So those those Attilas are superhuman, super big dudes. You know they're nine feet tall, give or take, and uh, I, I'll tell you this: they are terrifying on the battlefield. Um, as with anything, they are not invincible. You know, they're not like, you know, I, 
I had no problem charging a Sunset Striker up to him and, you know, due to some dice, I survived longer than I thought I would. Um, and I managed to put a wound on him. You know, so he is uh, also one of the only multi-wound models that will be available in the Faction Starters. Most most everything in, uh, in the Faction Starters are single wounds. Um, again, most things in the game are single wounds. Uh, so those, those big Attila 3s, um, if you want to focus on big stompy, you know, Terminator style ABC combat robots, Attila's are where it's at. I'll give you one more, one more good look at him. Again, I, I'll get him fully painted maybe by next week's, uh, next week's show. I'll, uh, I'll have, I'll have him, him and his friends painted up and I can, show you uh, uh show you a better a better image i feel bad that he's not painted um and there's so much more there is so much more uh, i i i want this is this is where i run into trouble there is so much i want to tell you but i can't because we're not there yet and not all of it is completely finalized um so i don't want to be like oh and this is going to be a unit because barf uh, or, oh, yeah, and this is something that we're going to make sure that is available after the Kickstarter. Because we don't know yet. So, I'm going to be good. I'm the, Limit what I've showed you to what I've showed you. Um, let you guys know that it is coming. We are, we are again, the end of March. So, a little five weeks from now is Adepticon and you'll get a lot more information of what's going to be available uh, at the Kickstarter from there uh, plus a cool little surprise um, and then it comes down to when everything gets ready and we and Alex is ready to hit that big green button to, to smash it again but this time, this time I think we are going to do amazingly well uh, you know, do I think that it'll be cool when you're not zombie side numbers? Of course not. They're a giant company. We're we're a handful of dudes. Would it be really cool if it was? Hell oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I I I encourage you to join that the the Warzone Eternal fan Discord. Uh, I encourage you to join the Warzone Eternal Facebook group where we will be talking and showing pictures and uh, almost every video, including this one, will get linked to there. Um, a lot of news is going to come through there. If you have TikTok or Instagram, follow Resnova, follow follow me, the professional nerd, um, and uh, get ready because Warzone Eternal is coming. And I think, I think that we are gonna. The, the, I think that we're gonna find a lot of very, very happy gamers out there when they start actually getting to push models around and start playing this game. So I'm excited. Uh, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I, I I want to tell you more. I want to spill the beans and then look at Alex and go, "Oops!" But I am not. I'm not. I'm gonna be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave now. Before I say too much, um, please talk talk in the comments. Share this video to your various uh, Warzone or Mutant Chronicles fan sites. Um, I I look forward to discussing this in the uh, the Facebook group or in the comments of this section. Um, yeah, I I am I'm feeling real positive about the the direction Warzone Eternal Warzone Eternal is headed. And I hope you guys do too. But until then, please, please, please be safe. Get vaccinated, wear a mask. Get you know, if you if you're in a place where you need to, get boosted if you can. Um, you know, wash your hands. People are filthy. Stuff is filthy. Money is filthy. Ugh. You know, nobody wants to be sick. So do all of those things. Uh, but above all else. Leave every room a little happier than when you got there, or a lot happier if you can, and play some games. I will see you next week.